Hey everyone, this tutorial is going to cover the Arnold Physical Skylight within Maya. The Physical Skylight aims to mimic a real world sun and sky. To create this light, navigate up to the Arnold dropdown, click Lights, and at the bottom of the list you'll see Physical Sky. When created, you should see this sort of dome light that appears in the viewport. Now the scale of this dome light really doesn't matter, so don't worry if it seems like it's too small. To begin rendering, either use the Arnold dropdown and click Open or Render View, where you can hit the play button, or you can use the Renderer dropdown and change to Arnold, where you'll also get a play button. Now you may notice this dome light does create a full dome around the environment, and it already creates a horizon line and sky. And if you aim the light high enough, you'll even see a sun. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And let's open up this light and check out the settings. I'm going to open up the attribute editor. And what I want to make sure to look for is find the physical sky tab. You'll notice it over here on the right. Within the physical sky tab, you'll notice a handful of sliders. I'm going to start things off with elevation and azimuth. Elevation, as the name implies, deals with the elevation of the sun. So notice how as I lower the elevation, the sun starts lowering. You'll actually see the sun lower in the sky, which does change the light values of the dome itself, and it also changes how the sun uh, affects all shadows in the scene. So as I lower it down, notice how the shadow starts getting longer and longer, or if I change it all the way up to 90, the sun is now directly overhead. I'm going to go ahead and lower this back to 45. Now azimuth deals with the rotation of the sun. So notice how I change this value and the shadow is slowly rotating around the RV. Next slider is intensity, uh, just as simple as the name states, deals with the intensity of the light. So notice how I increase this number and the light source gets brighter and brighter. Going back to the top of the list is turbidity. Turbidity deals with the haziness or kind of smog in the air. So if I lower this from one and slowly raise it to 10, Notice how hazy the overall environment gets, and in turn will change the colors that are reflecting into your scene. I'm going to lower this back to three. Ground albedo deals with the color of this ground. So right now it is set to gray, which is giving you this kind of grayish color. However, I can come in here and start introducing different color values. Similar to ground albedo, sky tint will tint the sky. By default, it stays at white, but you can introduce some additional color, which will change the lighting and reflections that affect your scene. And just like sky tint, sun tint will tint the sun itself. Again, you can change this color. The very last slider is sun size. This will change the size of the sun. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the camera a little bit just so you can see the sun and start increasing it. Notice how the sun in the sky gets bigger. Now you may be curious how that actually affects your environment. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this RV one more time and take a look at the shadow. Notice at a lower number, the shadow seems pretty sharp, but as I start increasing this value, since the sun is getting bigger, it's actually causing the shadow to get softer. So when you get it to a very large number, notice how now the shadows start giving more of an overcast look. All right, so using those same principles, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this render, and I'm gonna switch scenes over to this interior environment and just kind of do the same thing. I'm going to click this Arnold dropdown, lights, click physical sky. I'm going to click this renderer dropdown and click Arnold, and I'll just hit play. So right now in this scene, I do have a series of windows over here. So let's go ahead and increase the intensity and just sort of see what happens. Notice how 
when I use an intensity of 10, I start getting a little bit of light bleeding through. I can choose to increase this number even more. Uh, this is actually light source purely from the sky. This isn't actually a light source from the sun itself. I can increase this a little bit more. Again, just kind of seeing what happens. I can lower this and I can start messing around with the azimuth. And I'm going to try and find the actual sun. I'll just keep bumping this up a little bit. Right there, this is the actual sunlight. I can start seeing some of those shadows forming. And kind of rotate it a little bit more. Something like that's kind of neat. And maybe I will lower the elevation uh, just to get more of these streaking shadows into the room. So something like that is kind of neat. Maybe I'll rotate this some more. It's really up to you as far as how you want this to look. Based on how much I rotate this determines how much starts hitting this back wall and this ground. And if you remember sun size, the larger I make this number, the softer these shadows will become. And that's the Arnold Physical Skylight.